recording or are you going to yep. use it for something else? You are? Yeah. Uh, and we're going now. I just need a good Bruce spot Hack. to probably put it. What's that? What Bruce do you think? Hack? Yeah, do you know him? Not really. There's a couple of his LPs over at whatever Mind Cure is now. Really? Yeah. You mean Mind Cure is not Mind Cure? No, Michael sold it. Are you kidding me? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It reopened just as it was closed for a week. It reopened. He's got about 75% of the same stock, but uh. it's... Uh, it's some like strictly punk rock guy who's uh, running it now, so I suspect it's going to be a little less interesting. Yeah, well, Mike had sold off almost everything that was of any interest to me anyway. Yeah. So, but that's shocking. But he would, know. but he would get something interesting sometimes. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, he when he had his initial giant purchase. Yeah. That. I was always interested in. He had thousands of really interesting records, and I ended up with 600 of them or whatever. Uh, and all that Hungaritan and stuff, etc., came from yeah. him. Yeah. Because it was the collection was from a Hung Hung Hungarian expatriate. All right, well then. I, I knew there would be plenty of things to play tonight, so. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's so much to play that it's going to be very hard to uh, to figure out how to do it. So, what are you, are you going to make? You're going to do a live FaceTime feed, and you're going to therefore have your camera be handheld and moving. Around yeah, we can that. move it around if we'd like. And okay. It'll be tethered to this, but we can see it here, so that's right. kind of cool. And I'm recording both of these, so I've got a camera here, and then so to be a little more dynamic, that you you'll be able to see both but it's oriented this way so we can kind of pass things around and make highlights of things that we're showing each other it's 68 right 68 yes. right. mm, 68 presents oh, I just got into BYOC mode yeah. again I keep track of these things 68 presents electronics right so I guess we'll start with the Bruce Hack thing then since this is Pittsburgh and he was on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Oh, I remember that. Did you really? Yeah. Were you a kid then? No, 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 no. I saw the clip of him playing. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want a drink or anything, Ryan, before we get started? Yeah. Do you? No. Oh, that's right. Um, do you? Actually, I'm just going to... I'm not going to drink any alcohol. I think I'm going to drink, or I might later, but right now I think I'm just going to get something to... Wet my whistle. Yeah. These are fun. Oh, yeah. They're little and ribbons. And they sound surprisingly good, too. Yeah, and they have a line out. And yeah, up. yeah. And, and I've got it. The case is a little loose since I've got it to where you can open it up and do some just touch circuit bending. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, they make it, they make it relatively easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are really straightforward built. And I've seen them like I've seen like five or six of them connected together. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, especially with the really delay cool. unit. That's really nice. Yeah, the, the say, yeah, the the delay one's probably the best one. Yeah. Then we'll eventually get to this, which is. A Korg synthesizer for the Nintendo DS. Oh. But I think we're gonna first do a, a little presentation on hack. I brought a couple things. Cool. I don't know where the office here. Oh, uh, it's just the standby switch okay. there. Okay. Yeah, like just pull out a little stylus and then I haven't done a whole lot with it. But you can the DS ten, so is that like the MS Oh I see. Okay. And it has uh since so I can I can just play a loop and change the BPMs and all yeah, that. Yeah. Make sure you do things in front of the camera so the camera can see it if you are going to be, you know, uh, demonstrating anything. But putting that laptop somewhere where it will get more of the room in, if oh, possible. Um, stool, maybe. Right now it's 
you know, it's basically getting a shot of this. So if I sit down here, I'm not in the shot, Ben's not in the shot. Um, and that way, if the anticipated other people get here, uh, they can sit in that chair. Yeah. So anyway, <coughs> I think I'm gonna drag a camera in here too. I didn't bring many recordings, but I brought some good ones. Fine, if you sit next to Ben, then I can get shots of both of you demonstrating your instruments, etc. Okay. So. Turn it on and play it. Uh, turn the dial up more. You know, I wanted to use a different setup than what we had last week because we had a lot of problems for two weeks ago. We had a lot of problems in there. They're mating! <laughs> I hope that I can keep one of the babies. It's, uh, that one gets boring after about five or so seconds. You got that at radio station? Yeah, yeah. It's one of those self build kits that's incredibly overpriced. I think it's $30. It was really silly. But I, I, I had the money at the time and felt like having something to do. So I just solder it myself and stuff. It was not a complicated soldering job. Offering it as a sacrifice to the electronic gods. Now oh, he's strangling it. Are right, you ready for Bruce Hack? Yeah. I don't really even necessarily like Bruce Hack, but I thought that this would be a good thing to show because of the. 
Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh connection. Can you use this for your dance class? We do, Mr. Rogers, but we use it in a different way, though. I'll clap my hands and this computer will go on like this. It's warming up. We had no money. We did our first record with a $7 microphone, and when the garbage trucks went by at 11 o'clock in the morning, we had to stop recording because we didn't have soundproofing. And the people who helped in the shipping and in the billing and in the running of Dimension 5 were my children, and it was a tremendous amount of effort and energy. Hey, what's that over there? What, that looks like a flying saucer. Can it be one? Miss Nelson, there are two. There are three of them. And look, there's even writing on it. They look more like records than flying saucers. They really do. Really? <laughs> I don't believe it. Those are our records. Those are the dad singing written records. Maybe they always were flying saucers, but I don't know. I want to thank you. I thank you many thousands of teachers and kids. I have a song are you programming for now? A song about parts of the body. Cool. And oh, I wish that Mr. McFeel were here to see it too. How does it go, Bruce? It goes like to see his appearance on the Mr. Rogers show because Mr. Rogers is a, it's a pretty psychedelic show to begin with but then when they go to visit Bruce and Astor it just you, you can see that it was pretty wild <laughs> or not yeah that, that episode is twisted watching Mr. Rogers <laughs> Nothing like what Bruce and Esther brought to that program. That was... This guy is something else. Genius. He's just got to be stoned out of his gourd. And Mr. Rogers did a great job. Wow. Bruce saw himself, I think, as a teacher or as a guru, but not a teacher in the typical sense. In other words, if you were teaching an institution, you'd be completely unstructured. But he saw himself as a... You know, it might be a little easier to set up kind of to build the path bars to the stairs. It's fun to drive, and when you drive, every one can kind of block and shout if I sit down. We'd have both going. I love it, man. It's the greatest thing ever. Yeah, it's great. 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 Well, he used to call us uh, his star children, you know, and so he was always thinking uh, cosmically, almost as if, yeah, he was relating to something telepathically, to something going on on Mars or somewhere in the, in the cosmos. Yeah, I was a little child, and we, we discovered him uh, playing around the apartment complex. We, we would see him occasionally through the window. Uh, he was sitting there with probably a five by four sheet of plywood with all these series of wires and just everything coming out of it. And then later on, uh, you know, Bruce discovered us as well, and uh, he would invite us into his studio, uh, the Blue Room studio, he called it. All right, enough of that. Okay. <laughs>
Unless you wanted to keep going, but... No, no, that was a nice little taste. Yeah. That was a young Mr. Rogers and Mr. Yeah, Dooley there. Nice. Right, uh... I'm not going to have plenty of things as usual that I want to show, but this, what, does anybody else want to do next? He's got some CDs and LPs. Right. I only has instruments to show. Well, we will get around to that in a little bit. Yeah. What have you got for the bed? Uh, you may have one or all three of these things. I've got... Lydia Cavanaugh playing original works for Theremin. Oh, uh, yeah. I, th I think I have it on tape. Which the I had her autograph the booklet. Oh, that would be nice. Where did you hear her play? In Erie, Pennsylvania. Be back in here. Let me plug this camera in and make a desperate attempt to have it usable for an hour or so from now. I did plug, uh, charge a battery. I, saw, I just didn't know if they were charged or not. I figured just to help prepare. Which battery? Down in the basement for the camera. Oh, they should have both been completely already charged, charged already. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering why that was probably. Let me just see here. Uh, there was an all famine festival in Erie today. Which is, I don't know if you know from Erie, it's just about two, two and a half hours north of here, and it's just a small, small town in uh, the northwestern uh, tip of, of, of Pennsylvania, right, right on the Erie uh, uh, Lake. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Leon Theremin's uh, biographer teaches, or used to teach at uh, Mercy Coast College at, uh, in here, so he arranged for a, a week of Theremin events which was capped off by um, Robert Moog uh, lecturing on the history of electronic instruments, so I got to say hello to him. Nice. And then that night, Lydia Kavanaugh played uh, a, a theremin and piano recital. And then the next day, she appeared with the Mercyhurst Orchestra playing uh, two pieces for theremin and orchestra. One was a Joseph Schillinger piece. I've never heard any of before. And the other was uh, an arrangement of uh, Miklos Rosa's music for Spellbound. And she is just fascinating to watch. Yeah. It's so amazing. I mean, she's just, she stands there with this intensity, and she's just gracefully moving around this, this uh, instrument. And she's, I think she was Theremin's great niece. Yeah. Yeah, they're actually related. All right, well, let's start with her. And I think she has a new one on mode that I haven't gotten. That's the, the first one. Okay, um, let's see. Um, this is something I don't have in my collection except for maybe on tape, so that shows just a severe lack. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right, track one is Melody, 1929. By... Kavanaugh, or is this a Joseph Schillinger? Okay. Melody. And this is Kavanaugh Pierce. Alright, well, let's listen to that one. Okay. Schillinger is the guy who Earl Brown studied with, right? Or studied, either studied, studied with him or studied his methods, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
to say to jumping ahead to something more contemporary, such as the last thing on here. That is also a piece with tape. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, do it. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty traditional and kind of Russian sounding. This one is Voice of Theremin, 1996, Kavina and Tate. There's a picture of her as a little girl. Yeah, that's in the book. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She has his only... I guess it never really worked. She has his only uh, turtle tone. Is that the one that you dance in? Yes. The, the box or whatever that is right. just basically to pick up the movements of a dancer. Yeah, yeah. She has she has his, uh, his prototype. Hey, they're back. 
back in. Yeah. Hey, whoever did it. Like you had some day. watchers and they left and now they came back. Well, like, yeah, it keeps going in one at a time. Somebody come in, somebody leave. It doesn't let me know who it is exactly. Usually it, it gives me a, a cue. Let's see, they keep going and leaving. And then we can, we can spice it up. Yeah, yeah, you should definitely do that. That'll make it much funnier. That one's called ass. <laughs> also, it's kind of disappointing. I guess. <laughs> yes. Is this what the hippies did? Oh, is it supposed to create trails? <laughs> no, no, this quickly. one doesn't. Uh, no. if you, I have a really good one that will. What's uh, it supposed to do that? I can't. Uh, it, it changed things. My skin's a little pink and shit like that. Uh, but there's a really good trail one on here that I showed you the other day. Color Ghost, yeah. I see there was also a kaleidoscope one. Yeah, those are pretty cool. But this one does like a trailing chromatic aberration kind of thing. Yeah. It's really neat with any sort of movement. This one, oh, this one's fun. This one's the ass. <laughs> yeah, that's not really showing on the screen right now, your screen recording, because it's behind you. Oh, good call, thank you. Yeah. Gotta highlight the ass. It's really kicking in, guys. I'm getting up. Yeah. Well, we're gonna start bringing out the. Uh, <laughs> so she only has two CDs on it. Hasn't she been around for a long time? She has. She has two on both. Oh, so she might have others. She might, and, and I think it's more like you'll, you'll find her popping up on other people's recordings. So I think she's on a Tom Waits album. She's on the Inwood soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I remember that, actually. Oh, yeah, okay. Most of the pieces were clearly like traditionally notated, like she was playing notes. Uh -huh. But there's one piece she did that was just actions. So she would stand in front of them and she would do, oh, nice. and she would do something like this. You know, and it was just these particular motions that would, she would make, regardless of what uh, the pitches would come out of the instrument. Yeah, that was, I would be more interested in that. It's sounds... wonderful to watch. All right. Um... How about if I play the track that you're on? Okay. Of mechanically repetitive re recorded records of record by yours truly from 2008. It's the very first track. Now, the first track I that much. is called Over and Undercurrents a la Id Entity, and that's from 1979, and it's me playing the Ann Arbor Blues and Jazz Festival. 8-track cartridge and just going through from track to track and then many years later, I think it was 1990, yeah, 1996, you and I played together when I first moved to Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and I asked you to make probably 16 samples for me of different types of timbres that you were capable of playing on your sax. Right, right. And then I, and that was back in the day when I had an 8-bit sampler that was very primitive, so I could only do 16 samples maximum. And then I programmed a sequence from that that was pretty much completely unlike what you were likely to have played with the sound. Well, good, actually. <laughs> That's good. Well, yeah, I didn't want to, I wasn't trying to simulate 
you playing. Right. I was trying to make something different than what you would have put. And then the original idea of Over and Under Currents a la Identity was that it was supposed to be a background track. track. I'm watching the, uh, the trails on the screen there. And, uh... Too bad you have it there. Man. It's just the delay that's split up into different registers. So it's yeah. got whatever three different colors, and then each color comes in. Yeah, flap your wings. Like All like oh, right, I just threw the record, and then that's actually particularly nice to throw the record. It looks like I'm juggling, you know, juggling multiples because there's one after another. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the original idea had been that that was just going to be a background track to somebody playing sax. And therefore, my using Ben in this way was my realization of that. Uh, and you didn't even need me there. Right. It was 17 years later, which now seems like nothing because that was 20 years ago. <clears throat> and hopefully this amplifier will work because it tends to not work. Ben doesn't come in. It's this thing in Ann Arbor Blue Spice Bowl. It's Sun Ra it's got Sun Ra and Dr. John. <laughs> You too could own a copy of this record. Collector's it is, item. It is definitely a collector's item. And you too can have a great time trying to convince your friends that it's really, really important and not just some weird science project that eats shit, which is what some of the reviewers thought it was. Although, actually, I'm exaggerating. Hand uncovered, every cover is different. And it has some aspects of it that I won't even go into that are so collectible, it's mind boggling. Well, the second side is definitely the only side of its type that it goes back into itself, right? Right, but that's not the only record that's like that. But it's the only record that was cut going in first and then coming back out again and then stopping shortly before the beginning point. So if you put the record on the beginning... Uh, that's Marcus. Okay, yeah. come in! Maybe you could move that stuff up there so that he can sit there. Hey, exactly. Um, squeeze yourself in. In fact, I'll get a, I'll get a chair. Or if you don't mind sitting in front of the couch, one person can sit there and three people can sit on the couch or whatever. What is this? Is this a black way to dress it? How Here are some oh, nice. black white posters that my friend Kelly made that he just bought for me. I said I'd never do drugs and now look at me is what one of them says. So we're doing he's recording here and this is a live Facebook feed and then I'm doing a screen recording of this screen on the computer which has another camera pointed out this way that's so this is from my the theme tonight is electronics. This is from my record, mechanically repetitive re-recorded records record. And the samples that are playing of saxophone playing are a bit playing. Like, 
That's from, well, the piece is from 1979 and 1996. The record's from 2008. Uh, I'll put on just a little bit of the second side. <laughs> or, as they say, shits and giggles, though I've never been quite sure of what that means. <laughs> A fraternity of egg tests. No matter. You ain't Taylor will kind of work on the shadows of the dead and we done the floor. Quickly. A fraternity of egg tests. No matter. You ain't Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> This the record was recorded, was was imprinted, going inward first and then coming back out again, which means the coming back out again was imprinted over top of it going in. So usually what happens is that you put the needle down, it starts playing coming out from the middle, and then it gets caught in a lock and it stays locked. This is just playing for a minute or whatever without getting caught. I don't I literally don't think that's ever happened. It's never happened to me before. So I'm just waiting for it to come out. But if it doesn't happen, I'm glad to have it done again. I've got the final one. Now I got it to the point where the 
end of the going backwards uh, has been reached. So it can't actually go anywhere. So this is inevitably going to lock. But that's amazing. This is like 10 minutes straight or an hour ago. It's great. Lock it. Well, yeah, I mean, I could move the... Can you see the... the top of the disc? Does it look differently? Well, it does if you were looking at it under a microscope, but it's pretty hard to see it here. I do actually have a microscopic it's just a, it's image of it where simple it's very obvious how bizarre it is. This switch is on and off that, like, that on-off gate mm -hmm. that okay. controls the frequency, and uh, uh, that's like a high-range low. Okay, wow, that's great. And it, you get a lot out of it considering yeah. it's so there's so little. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is fantastic. Wow. I, I like. <laughs> I I read a review of it in Electronic Musician, mm -hmm. and like I looked up their video online, mm -hmm. and like within ten minutes I had my credit card out. This <laughs> it was love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. That's, that's, that is quite fantastic. Wow. I just borrowed yours. I misplaced mine, and in a hurry to it was at four percent, in a hurry to get it. Yeah, okay, so you yours. found mine, the one that's yeah. up in this room here? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I, of course, now don't have mine, but I think my laptop should have plenty of power on it. Uh, but maybe, well, what do, you, what do you want to do next? Okay, you only have the, you have the instruments. Did mm -hmm. you two bring anything in particular that you wanted to do with electronic music related? Not really. No. No? Okay. Well, then, we, that makes it easier plenty. for us. Yeah, we, <laughs> have enough, well, we have enough to last for the next decade. So. <laughs> uh, awesome. What do you want to do next? Um, do you want to play something, or, or are we going to do the instruments? Well, doing the instruments, of course, would be fun. I kind of... I have my laptop set up to show one thing of mine. Do and that. I, since I don't have it connected to a cord oh. right now, maybe mm -hmm. it's better to do that and get it over with and then shut it up. Okay. Uh, and then, then let's do the instruments. Yeah. Okay. Another one in here. Yeah, I, I saw yeah, some, uh, this one. Is, yeah, this one is vicious. Okay, so this is a thing of mine <laughs> called Murray Gate Busking, and it involves a use of a device called the Boot Music Busking Unit. You, you must know this one, right? Yeah, I think I do. Okay, so the Boot Music Busking Unit was a portable, what I call a concrete mixing studio that had four tape player radios in them, and the tape player radios could go reverse and forward and reverse so you could create a sort of rhythmic pattern by playing it for one second forward, clicking yeah. it to reverse and playing it for one second back and then you know going yeah. back and forth between the two and that was one possibility. And then uh, uh, but it also had a PXL camera built into it and a when you opened up the lid of it it was a a television screen in the middle that showed what was, what was on the PXL camera, and then it had two mouths that were from blabbermouth radios that mm -hmm. opened and closed depending upon what the volume was of the stuff that was coming through them. So the, typically the PXL would be showing the, a close-up of a mouth that was doing something, and then the two mouths would be moving on either side of it, and then I had a little symbol that was only about this big that was mounted on the top of it that I could play and then run through the whole thing, and it was completely battery powered so I could travel around with it and set up four speakers and have it all be live and other people could plug instruments into it too and then I made tapes that were especially for to be played in it that I called my mm -hmm. mixing musical material. So this is a video of, uh, of a performance in mm -hmm. Scotland at a shopping mall called the Murray Gate, which was eventually stopped by the police, but uh, we got to do a fairly good bit of business there before the police came along, and the police were, being Scottish, were polite. I can grab what you want, unless you want to keep it. Uh, so, here goes Murray Gate busking. I thought I had a Jean-Jacques Perry CD in my car, but it's at home. But I do have it on my phone. You could play some of his stuff. Early, early mode. Yeah, I have some Perry and Kingsley stuff that I could play too. Okay. 
Actually, I'll, I'll just, I'm not going to play this whole thing, so mm -hmm. I will just cut to the chase a little bit here. Okay. We attracted a pretty good crowd. Zipperson. This was 1988. The suitcase is up at the top middle of the screen right now. My uh, lover at the time, Laura Adele Trucille, was playing it while I was doing chalk drawing. A guy named Vex is the one who's playing guitar. Plugged into the whole thing. <laughs> you can see the blabber mouth radio as so you could. That's a, the woman is also doing chalk drawings as well as Laura Ann Walker. Otherwise known as Law. So that is Vex and Law. because somebody who was in this audience many years later, maybe decades later, posted online that it was because they saw this performance that they became an electronic musician. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they, I mean, they had no idea who the fuck we were or what was going on at all. But, but something about it got yeah. their attention. Right. Do you want anything to drink? What's that? Yeah. I get a beer or water? Okay. There's Orangina. Oh, Orangina. I'll take Orangina. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at that stack of records there and wondering which ones I have and which ones I don't. Well, I know you have this one. No, I don't have that Oh, you one. don't have it. No. You said, you know, I looked because you were talking about the piece called Low Speed. So I was looking at it to see whether that was on there. I mean, what you said it was. I, I have it on another source. You were right. Yeah. Uh, well, when I have my students uh, listen to that stuff, it, uh, I, I direct them to the Uber Web History of Electronic Music. Uh-huh. Uh, I've never even looked at that. Uh, yeah, actually, yes, yes. All right, do you want to have everybody have an instrument, since we have enough instruments for everybody? And... I think you need to do this. I would love to do So April's going to do the thing with you. Yeah, we'll wait here for uh, Brian to come back. And then this is a, this is just modeling. Yeah, so it's fast. And when you get into fast, right. you get into that, that stuff. Yeah. So then we have a fly in the lab. Okay, so the lab in the lab. And if you get it under the light, you'll get it. Oh. 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 Well, we better hand that to Ryan and let yeah. him deal yeah. with it. Yeah. Um, he said, it's easy to open up and make it out of that point, so... Yeah, I, think he delib I think he deliberately left the cover on the okay, yeah. you know, so you didn't break it. Arangina, for you, can we? Did you want anything? Uh, no, not right now, thanks. So do you want to sit over here and pick an instrument and start playing? Okay. And we'll do... Uh, A, a symphony of uh, 
small electronic instruments. I didn't. I didn't pull it out, but my theorem is actually in the car. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. We've well, got the DS uh, Korg S10 emulator. I'm going to reposition this so that maybe yeah, another person can sit here. Can you can you squeeze in there? Or yeah, do you yeah, want yeah. To yeah. Just oh, okay, now you can first. This guy is pretty fun. All right. So let's just go through. through. All of this ultimately gets edited, so and it gets edited for a particular project. So I want to, if you all can indulge me, if you could just cut up for a moment. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's excited. Yeah. I'm just quite, quite stimulated. This little guy. We call her DJ Chaos. When she plays it. Oh yeah. Yeah, DJ Chaos back there. Right, uh, so Ryan, I am truly really pleased with you. Can you explain which instrument that is and talk a little bit about it? Alright, so it's a Nintendo DS with a Korg DS10 cartridge in it that is a rather extensive Korg synthesizer emulator. Now, I don't know a whole great deal about these things, but it gets so far in depth that you can navigate to the patches and you can, you can with this pen, you can drag and do cable switching and turn a bunch of knobs and stuff yeah. that I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It's got a like a chaos pad type type thing which is an X and Y axis that will let you do some sort of things with volume and pitch. Oh, wow. And then it has drum sequencing and, and uh, keyboard sequencing. So you, can, <laughs> you can make some pretty poppy kind of like EDM sort of beat, 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 pretty easily with it. I, even though, I mean, I thought that what you were doing today was like I was saying, it's the kind of thing where anybody can just immediately pick it up and produce that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I still can see a lot of potential in that thing. I'm actually tempted to get one like that because I thought it was uh, pretty interesting for such a small thing. Yeah. So, all right, uh, why don't you do a brief demonstration with it, oh, and then we'll move on to another device and another device and another device and another device, and then we'll all play together. So, uh, this is what I saved from earlier that I was doing. Okay. And then I was getting really wild with the the, the delay. Can you turn it up more? Is that not as loud as it's going to get? I, I actually meant to bring in the sound system when I put it out. So, I've got the BPMs like all the way down to 10, so I can. So, do, do some where we're not talking so that I can use it to sample from for my project.
All right, I'm going to cut you off on that. Right. Uh, can, is there something that Kelly can fuck around with? Monotron? That sounds good. It, it, the Monotron is one, is one that you have, right? Um, that's your Monotron? Right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So can you give an introduction to that and maybe explain to uh, Kelly what can be done with it? And then... Yeah, there, there are two settings. You have like a, the, the pitch one and then the cutoff one. That's the most dynamic, so that's usually where I stay and you've got your volume here. And I've got it loose so that it looks like it's not on though. That'd be great. I might have dislodged the battery or something. It fell. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. These are the kind of batteries you need if you need them. All it is is the uh, the contact oh. adjusted out of it since it's a little precariously put in there. Uh, we might have to skip to someone else and I'll fix this in just a second. Okay. Or I'm pretty actually I skip to bed. Okay, this is the Board Weevil, made 2009 by uh, Tom Bugs of England. And it's uh, three oscillators. We've got frequency here. Uh, one of them can be adjusted with a light sensor. Uh, there are pitch ranges and there are dials here. There are switches here for either the oscillators running in tandem or to, to modulate one another. Uh, and then the real beauty of this is this fourth dial, which is a power star, so it acts like the battery is running out of energy and it's more chaotic and unpredictable. And then in addition, all of these gold plates are contact points, so you actually adjust things on the oh, instrument wow. by essentially conducting the current through your body by coming into contact. You get the cooler one if you put it in, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, so, an, that's way cooler. Well, let's, let's really turn up the volume on this. What do you call that part that does the power, power, power attenuator? Star. A power star. Yeah, so that's actually the oscillators at their lowest setting. If I turn these up, and here's the power star. It's all the LEDs dim and everything. So I got this. Okay, let's move on to Kelly again. So, you got these. This is a control like the the speed but basically I think it's best to just hand it over to somebody and say push it and turn knobs and just and find a spot and you like don't oh, drop it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus built my spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like if you're able to get to where you can turn, yeah, you've got to do that. Yeah, 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 nice. 
All right, let's move on to April. So then we'll make the introduction to the thingamagoop and then hand it over to... <laughs> thingamagoop uh, Model 1, a portable light-sensitive synthesizer. It's got one uh, 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 VCO in it. It's got one switch here which controls an LFO for the, either the dial or changes the blinkiness. Uh, and then there's another switch which is for high and low uh, frequency range. And the photoresistor is in the robot nose, which is uh, <laughs> detecting light. And then volume and on-off switch there. And if you've got a quarter inch, you can send it out to an amp there. Other than Drinking machine and they are in the machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the next device we got recently from a guy who works at a local gallery called Assembly. And he had an exhibit of these things. Uh, and had the walls just completely covered with them. He called this particular one an Echo Light Wave... Oh no, he called this one the Super Duper Light Sensitive Doomsday Device, and the name that he made it <laughs> under is the Echo Light Wave... Echo Light Wave Unspeakable. So, the walls are covered with these things, and they... This one only cost $30, and some of them are even cheaper than that, and I was the only person to buy one. Which I was going to say, completely, absolutely $30. shocking. Yeah. Yeah, right. Like Etsy, they're like two hundred or three hundred dollars, or eBay, you know, self-made yeah. one, handmade one. Like so this one has touch-sensitive and photoelectric cells. I mean, it's a. Uh, so it's much of what we've already been hearing, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but I would give him credit for fun design mm -hmm. and a definitely affordable price. Thank you. 
now, how about if we all five play together? I'm not exactly sure what to do with the camera here. I'll just sort of spin it around our faces. And then if we, oh yes, thank you. Um, and if we could just not talk during this, this is all for a specific project, so I need to have some talk-free footage. So I'm going to start, and then we can start.
Looks like an X and Y thing. Looks like an X and Y thing. Looks like an X and Y thing. It's like you can't really control this thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you're ready to for a brief sojourn into the other room, I'd like to demonstrate a, some uh, hypothetically more sophisticated device. And then we'll come back in here again. Uh, thank you everyone for your participation. That was actually fun. I think there was That was a I lot of fun. A society of people who just like to there play with small electronic this. instruments with much more. They're completely fed into it. Yeah.
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> same concept uh, as a photo cell. Oh, that's what we didn't Oh, I had it going while we were doing everything. Okay. So the same concept, except that has a light source, yeah, which yeah, makes it okay. interesting for a performance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was doing some things where I was just like putting it in, in the room. And then, uh, oh, yeah, I saw you doing that. I, I got a shot of you doing that. So I don't know whether it's possible fan. to move your laptop with so little power. Right? I've got 25%, so I um, guess I'm okay. It's got a tuck away right here. Okay. Not a dead. Yeah. What was your name again? I'm Ryan. Ryan? Kelly. Kelly? Yeah. Kelly. Okay. Well, who do we have in there? We got one viewer. We've tricked one person into watching. Yet they haven't revealed themselves. Who are you? We just had a very noisy little jam here, to say the least. I mean, you can be wherever. I just, uh, sorry, Where do you recommend I put my laptop tent? Uh, well, I'm going to be sitting right here. I mean, you can try putting it right on the end. Or you can try putting it on top of this, maybe. Okay, as long as it's not in your way. No, it won't be in my way. Um, try to get them with this camera, and then this one I can face towards you. Okay. That way. I just need to scores, but you can go ahead and do whatever you're doing. And after you're done, I will... Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, come on over if you if you're still around. <laughs> yeah, I did send you the address. Yeah, just yeah, look in your text message. Not far from the rock room. Yeah, yeah, it's on Melwood. Tell them there's a fire hydrant in front of the house. Fire hydrant in front of the house and the door will be unlocked and the door will be unlocked, just come on in. 3609. Alright, yeah, we'll still we'll still be here. We might be closing up, but it'd be cool to hang out anyway. Alright, later buddy. Okay, so this is a set of samples called set of five number one. I'll explain little bits and pieces of it. Make sure I turn the camera on. <laughs> the beans have become so camera heavy <laughs> that. Uh, this was my first one in the flesh. <laughs> yeah, but he's participated through screen recordings before and found out how ridiculously overkill it is in terms of how much time is spent. We were dancing to one of my pieces. Yeah, at the end of it, Laura and I were dancing. And it was, it was remote, re, uh, remote viewing, remote grooving. Is that <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was what, about 59, I think, maybe? I don't know. It was a while ago. Yeah, it was a good while back. We're up to 68 now. Steve started in the fall. You've been here for at least one of them, I think. No, you, you two were here for one of them, weren't you? Yeah, maybe yeah. too. Maybe too. All right. Uh, so, I picked just an octave from each of five different sets of other in of other um, uh, samples that would be full sets. So the second octave, for example, is from a piece called Drum Machine. Now the thing about this is that I deliberately designed it so that there's a delay between the time that the key gets touched and the time that the 
drum machine starts playing, and the loops have space in them, so as you can see, there was no sound there. Hopefully that's not because I've done something from dawn. I think it's because uh, it is working as correct. <laughs> but now if I were to press that key down and sustain it with the pedal, hopefully, oh, wow. <laughs> which is another kind of small thing, not quite as small as what we were just playing around with. Uh, So did you buy this guy Gaku record? Oh yeah, I've had it for a long time. Oh you have? Okay. Yeah. Is that the same one that you have? I'm, I'm pretty sure I have this one plus like three others. Yeah. I, I don't know. That might be the only 10-inch one that I have. Mm-hmm. So the interesting thing about the bird samples is that in one channel, it's an actual recording of the bird. So I just set this up earlier tonight and I didn't really have time to check it. It's not working that well, but... Like. but so in one channel, it's the sound of the actual bird call, and on the other channel, it's the sound of me imitating the bird call. So that's, that's me imitating it. It's all whistling, etc. Mm -hmm. But I modified it in computer, so I'm not that good. Uh, and then what you should be able to hear on this side, and you're not be able to, being able to hear at all right now, so I'm going to switch the wiring a little bit. Uh, let's see. This. This kind of fucks up what I want to do, but... Yeah, we'll live with it. Now, uh, watching in case the fly. Uh huh. I know. So this is still. This is only my. Uh, for whatever reason, we're not getting both tracks. So this is just me simulating the bird. That's an actual bird without my simulation. And this is me simulating a bird again. All right, so moving on. Then there's another set of samples that I call the band name samples with B-A-N-N-E-D being the way it's spelled. And that's all names of bands that were banned from uh, the radio as things that could be said by a Catholic radio station. So one of them is upside down clock. Oh, Another one is All right, then uh, back to the gnome. Oops, not. Another one is from a project called Volunteers Collective Year of Sundays, which is a little complicated to explain, so I'll skip that, but... I will buy that, we all have great days. I will buy that, we all have great days. I will buy that, we all have great days. Yeah, that's a little bit better. 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 
So, whatever. I'm just going to play a little bit on that, playing all of them mixed together. so well so that's good enough for now. And you performed your band's names at the Subgenius Devival. Uh, right, in 2013. Yeah. That's the only time it's ever been performed live. Alright, thank and you, and you for your indulgence. Yeah. Let's move back. Can we play on that? Can, what's that? You trying to move oh on? no, if you want to play on it, yeah, right definitely, it's just that definitely I need to futz around with the, uh, uh, with the equipment more so. I mean, it's not working very well. But yeah, go for it. out of the way so you can get this with her. Mm-hmm. 
That's uh, that's not a sample. That's a sound that I program using the keyboard, the PX Point Seven S. Although, of course, you're simultaneously activating the, uh, the samples. That was cool. We're at about 5% battery on the laptop. Yeah. Alright, let's move back into the other room then. Hello, whoever it is that's uh, dedicated to watching this. Thank you very much. You're the sole survivor of this. <laughs> so we're, we have at least uh, one, two, let's see, three. Yeah, about three different cameras going, four and five at times. <clears throat> you really seem to be enjoying yourself. <laughs> this is right up her alley. I, I saw her eyes get this big with the first synthesizer, yes. So this is especially exciting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. What's well, good? Yeah. 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 Uh, and he also does like uh, very limited run uh, uh, mono 
modular synthesizers. Uh, well, that's volume, okay. and I forget. One of them is tone, like that's darker and that's okay. brighter. Yes. Well, I forget okay. what the other one is. It's, it's outlined down here. Oh, balance. Oh, good. Yeah. Between, between the oscillators. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's the whole schematic. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, which is more pronounced when you run it through uh, uh, an amplifier. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the real killer oh, part of yeah. that. All right, what do you want to do next, Ben? Oh, I don't know. I looked through your stack of LPs there, and my duplicate is of one of them is sitting on my lap. <laughs> Which one is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, thought, I figured we should probably play at least something off of that. Yeah, I guess And then I see you have the Messian piece. Oh, yeah. yeah, but um, the piece for six uh, on my... No. Let's, let's listen to that. It's 1930, if I remember correctly. A little later, I think. Let's see what it says. Oh, yeah, oh, 1937, it says. Yeah, Ori's over, over on that piece for uh, on Martino and uh, piano was 1932, I think. Yeah, and it is actually sensitive to how yeah. hard you press it. Yeah, it is yeah. I found a, I think I actually wrote it down. I found a setting where if I put my fingers down a certain mm -hmm. way and press really hard, it, it, but these have to be oh, the yeah. correct setting. Mm -hmm. I, I was actually picking up KDKA radio on it. <laughs> so the oscillators would cut out and just a little bit in the background I could hear the I could hear the radio. Maybe it would be different if you did it with your feet. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So what's the next? That's that's what I use to pick up silent radio and mm. and and, uh, and CIA transmissions. Yeah. <laughs> there was that <laughs> urban myth with uh, uh, Lucille Ball or something having yeah, fillings yeah, and being, yeah, but exactly. apparently it's been debunked. I think on Snopes. I don't know. Well, you all would have missed the classic era of Pittsburgh with. Robert Lansbury out with his uh, sandwich boards downtown, uh, always about why Lansbury can't get his mail and 10% of people can hear silent radio. And he <laughs> wow. insisted he was, you know, picking up government transmissions. I and actually they, published one of those things. Uh, did you really? Yeah. And uh, and Rich Pell made a documentary about it. Which is, which is quite good. Or at least it was fun to revisit it. Yeah, I talked to him before. I like the guy. Uh -huh. How do you use it to repeat the bit of these? Find something you like? Very difficult. Yeah. Uh, it, it actually came with, I think, a, a, sheet, a couple of sheets of paper with the design on it so you oh, could write patch mm -hmm. settings oh, down yeah. on so you could at least uh, get, get close to where you were. But yeah. it's, it's, it's a fair and so. Yeah. 
I kind of but I kind of like it sometimes. Well, I can get it. it I can get it into a certain zone. Are you finding it online, or are you doing it somewhere else? It's a YouTube file that I would play right off the bat. Why don't we just take all I actually did use it uh, on a record, I did it from there, and it turned out to be just like, like video oh, okay. I got this little well, space yeah, here, right. let me well, put I mean, something in there, and it's like, oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Get more of what she's doing, and then we'll, um, then we'll listen to this mess I am piece. So these guys are from Virginia, um, I forget where, near Richmond, but not Richmond, uh, and I believe there's a theremin, theremin solo in this, but I may be mistaken. constantly reaching over you or asking you to move cameras or doing all sorts of things. Yeah, it uh, seems like 
there's not much of a choice. Yeah. You can sit you here and I can stand or whatever. I'm kind of mobile because I'm operating cameras yeah. and stuff too. So if I want to sit here. You know, I could cross my legs, man, because I just got out of a yoga class. So I should yeah. be able yeah. to so, do that. <laughs> I don't know whether Ryan must have told you that this woman, Heidi, that you met the other night is somebody that I went out with one time oh, many years ago. Oh, Heidi Asmussen, whatever, Asmussen. I don't even know if I ever knew her name. Yeah, she has like a kind of a... Right, tattoo, tattoo on her face. Her face yeah. We, I was in the library. We were both in the library, and I, um, I saw her face tattoo, and I thought I had to talk to this person, etc. So I started talking to her, and her brother was playing harmonica in a band that was playing in the Hill District. So we agreed to meet at this bar, and then we went out and hung out with each other, and then we never saw each other again after that. But. She's the only paleobotanist I've ever mm -hmm. met, and I figured that she had moved away or whatever because I've never seen her since. I think I saw her one more time at the library. She moved to Point B. She bought a house. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Point Breeze well, that's still the city. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Point Breeze is right near here. That's actually yeah. that's close, if not closer, than where she was. I think she might have been in Squirrel Hill or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I find it very interesting. But, well, she's around again, yeah, or whatever. She's, she's flipping houses now. A nice house and just refurbishing it and renting out. All right, so uh, that's I am East for Six Home Month No from 1937. I've changed your camera, so depending on how you want to shoot with it right now. But, uh, well, I was going to leave it on your screen, but, but that's all right, it's fine where it is. <laughs> Feel free to change it around, however. The next one is next week, and it's in my place. <laughs> you remember the, the clarinet book that we used at the clarinet night? We looked at literally that was kind of shaped like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. She made that. Oh. So my pal, whose parents are from Academ Gorda, joined. Oh yeah. He was. Okay. He's a descendant of Academ Gorda. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So just to say, you know. Uh, that's definitely it. It's a heterodyne instrument, like a theremin. Yeah, but it has an oscillator. And, and I think it, it, you, have, you have a wire that you wear a ring on your finger, kind of, and you slide it along the wire and it changes. Or, or you can play with a keyboard. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like a tame theremin. It's got a wider range of sounds, yeah. and, and you either glissando or play specific pitches. Now, does the ring give it glissando, or does it change? Does it change the tonal qualities? No, it's totally pitch. So you know, I know it's pitch, but the same with the, with the ring. Doesn't it change the tonal quality of the oscillator as you're playing it? No, I think it only does pitch. The oscillator, the, the tonal controls are in the left hand. Okay. I've seen this with my bass, this electric bass performing. It had some sort of ring to interact with it. You could do like a, a dub stepping kind of blah, 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 blah filter of some sort, I guess, but it was, it was pretty neat that you get the wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Well, this, this instrument has been reintroduced and repopularized by the John Green with the radio. Yep. Made, made it a big comeback. With the <laughs> well, it's actually a nice little bit of blank line in France where they had two more in Paris. Probably no coincidence that the 
Players on the instrument. Yvonne, 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 Richard France joined. His old wrestling pal. He's a good wrestling coach. He used to coach with my dad. When right. I was a kid, he helped, I'm gonna helped me a lot. Again. I'm going to play a brief excerpt from my synthesizer piece from 1986. Narcoleptricism. <laughs> it's synthesizer and drum machine. DX7 big uh overheim drum machine. Mixture Troutonium. Whoa! Uh, this one? The label was interesting because they, for the most part, put out some of the crappiest stuff imaginable. <laughs> Every once in a while they would put out <laughs> something some really, really amazing. great. Yeah. You'd wonder how the fuck that happened. Uh, uh, the Trout. Tonium was originally invented in 1932 by a guy named Troutwein and uh, <laughs> was uh, in Germany and it was, uh, the composer who took an interest in it was Paul Hindemith. 
So they're going to say mm-hmm. Hindemith work for, for mm-hmm. three mm-hmm. Troutonians. They're, they're another uh, monophonic instrument, but they're kind of like an electronic monochord. So it's okay. a wire suspended over a metal rod, and the pitch changes depending on where you make contact. Mm-hmm. And Oscar Sela was a student of Hindemith's, who was also an engineering student. So he took up the instrument and developed it further and further and further and further and further. Move forward a few years, uh, Hindemith leaves Germany because of uh, the Nazi party and persecution. Oscar Sala decides to stay, so he is uh, at least sympathetic to to, uh, what's happening at the time, which lost him basically all of his artist friends from pre-war. but he, has, he developed the instrument more and more, so it's very sophisticated, has a lot of filters and effects on it, and even works on a, on a, a, a principle of a subsonic synthesis. Mm-hmm. Possibly uh, the most famous example of its use is... Not, not, not possibly, definitely the most famous Okay, so use. you know what I'm talking about. I absolutely do. Right. It's, you know the, it. it's the sound effects of the birds in... Hitchcock's movie, The Birds. Yeah. So those things that sound like birds attacking are actually the oh, playing yeah. of the Troutonian. Yeah. Yeah. And then that? there was a portable version of it called the Synquette. There's very little music composed for the Synquette, but a, a composer named John Eaton uh, has a piece for multiple Synquettes, which I also have a recording, so mm-hmm. which we probably won't get around to it tonight. But if we were to get around to it, we could get around to it. Uh, so here's a little bit of Oscar Sala's Five Improvisations on Magnetic Tape. All done with the Troutonian, if I remember correctly. Yes, it's all Troutonian. It's called like a trout? trout? No, a a U. The name of the instrument. Oh, oh, trout, trout, phonium, And the first use of trout phonium in the film was to get the sound design to make it sound like an Sometimes these things only go on until about 10 o'clock, and it's about 9.30 now, so therefore I'm yeah. working through things. If, uh, uh, he released a CD, Oscar Saylor re- released a CD entitled, uh, My Fascinating... Einer der bekanntesten Horrorfilme ist der erste Musikkarriere zu diesem Klassiker geworden. Erfunden hat sie ein Berliner Komponist, Oscar Saylor, für keinen geringeren Fans als Und dieser ganz helle und klirrende Klang entstanden ist, das hat den Hitchcock gepackt und damit war sozusagen... war so begeistert, als ihm Oscar Sala innerhalb weniger Wochen eigentlich den halben Film gleich vertont hat und äh, die eine Stelle, wo dieser Vogel da durch das Fenster hindurch pickt und es so, so, so dieser ganz helle äh, und klirrende Klang entstanden ist, das hat den Hitchcock gepackt und äh, damit war sozusagen äh, war Oscar Sala von einem Tag auf die andere Welt berühmt geworden. Oscar Sala in seinem Berliner Studio. 
Hier entstehen 1962 auf dem Trautonium die bedrohlichen Vogelschreie, die dem Kinopublikum in der ganzen Welt den Atem stocken lassen. Die einzigartigen Klänge faszinieren auch Synthesizer-Lehrer Holger Kuno aus Wildau. Er beschäftigt sich schon lange mit der Geschichte elektronischer Instrumente. Anfang der 90er Jahre besucht er Sala in seinem Atelier. Dabei hat der Musiker und Komponist ihm verraten, wie die Vogelschreie entstanden sind. Er hat eine Filmmaschine gehabt, da war dann so ein Monitor und äh, dann lief die Szene dazu und dann eine Bandaufzeichnung ja. daneben und dann hat er eben gespielt, also die Geräusche erzeugt und das mit Band aufgenommen, immer wieder auch übereinander gelegt und so, so dass letztendlich das zu diesen Szenen alles gepasst hat. Alfred Hitchcock verzichtet in den Vögeln auf herkömmliche Filmmusik und setzt fast ausschließlich auf die Geräuscheffekte. Der weltberühmte Regisseur kommt sogar zur Abnahme des Soundtracks nach Berlin und ist fasziniert vom Trautonium, wie Sala in einem Interview im Jahr 2000 erzählt. Und dann haben, haben sie ihm das vorgeführt und wie das da unten fertig war. Da ist so ein die Geschichte des Trautoniums beginnt 1930 an der Berliner Musikhochschule. Oskar Sala, hochbegabter Pianist, studiert hier Komposition bei Paul Hindemith. Der macht ihn mit dem Ingenieur Friedrich Trautwein bekannt. Der Hindemith sagte dann eben, ja also, äh, wenn sie auch löten können, dann ist es genau das Richtige, wenn sie zu dem Trautwein gehen. Denn der Trautwein sucht jemanden, der zwar eine künstlerische Begabung hat, aber eben auch technisch versiert ist. In der Versuchsstelle für Rundfunk der Hochschule der Künste entwickeln sie das Trautonium, benannt nach seinem Erfinder Trautwein. Und Oskar Sala wird zum virtuosen Spieler des Instruments. Es erzeugt Vokale, Tierstimmen, synthetische Klänge und herkömmliche Musik. Ich denke schon, dass es eines der ungewöhnlichsten Instrumente des 20. Jahrhunderts gewesen ist. Das hängt zum einen damit zusammen, dass mit dem Instrument oder mit der Entwicklung des Instruments wirklich nur lang beschritten wurde. So etwas gab es vorher noch nicht. Die Kombination von Elektronik und gleichzeitig Mechanik, um das Instrument überhaupt spielen zu können. Oskar Sala widmet sein Leben dem Instrument. Er verfeinert es technisch immer weiter, komponiert, hat eigene Rundfunksendungen und vertont hunderte von Filmen. Das Besondere des Trautoniums, es hat keine Tastatur, sondern eine Seite ähnlich wie bei einer Geige, mit der sich gleitende Tonleitern spielen lassen. Die Dynamik hängt davon ab, wie stark ich da drauf drücke. Für ein Diplomprojekt seiner Hochschule baut Dietmar Rudolf Anfang der 80er Jahre ein neues Trautonium für Oskar Sala. Keine leichte Aufgabe, denn der Künstler hat immer neue Wünsche und ist lange nicht zufrieden. Und er weigert sich beharrlich, seine Kunst weiterzugeben. Er hat niemand ausgebildet. Er hat zwar gesagt, er würde jemand ausbilden, aber er hat es nicht gemacht. Das ist schade eigentlich. Und wenn man guckt, wie viele Teil, äh, Knöpfe hier dran sind, äh, da hätte unbedingt jemand ausgebildet werden müssen, um das hernach spielen zu können. In der Wildauer Musikschule lernen sie heute auf Synthesizern. Sie sind moderne Nachfolger des Trautoniums. Dessen Klang bleibt für Holger Kuno unerreicht und es stört ihn immer noch, dass er bei seiner Begegnung mit dem großen Pionier der Elektromusik eins vergessen hat. Was mich am meisten geärgert hat, als ich in Spandau war und Oskar Sala besucht habe, das war die Tatsache, dass ich ausgerechnet mein Fotoapparat zu Hause liegen lassen habe, sodass ich also heute vielleicht sonst hätte sagen können, ich habe wenigstens ein Bild mit dem Meister zusammen. Aber das war dann leider nicht möglich, dann noch irgendwas zu besorgen. War nicht drin. 2002 stirbt Oskar Sala, aber seine Klangwelten leben weiter. Ich wollte nur die Rekordkörper zeigen, die Leute, die 
maybe, excuse me again, Marcus, sort of like this. Uh, here. And that's oh, just oh, wait, a, wait, wait, it's caught on the cord. No, don't, if the cord comes out, then the camera goes off. Um, okay, that's just a sampling of what's in the... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I have a much, much bigger collection than this, but this is the stuff that... This towards me. Uh, Would you say earlier you could do a class for 10 years and not play anything twice? I could, and, and that's actually true. So, but, without getting into that... Yes. Uh, Nice so this one foil ink. was a double record set on Mercury that also was released as two separate records. But this has work by Luciano Berrio, two pieces by him, Bruno Moderno, Luc Ferrari, Anna Zanakis, Dufresne Baronet, uh, Ooh, 45! Everybody know that piece? It's a, with a great uh, uh, sound poetry uh, uh, pronunciation, realization of it by Francois Dufresne. Uh, t uh, piece by Maurizio Cago, one by Herbert I. Merritt, one by Peter Henri, one by Georgi Ligeti, one by Bukoreshkiev, and one by Ari Rousseau. So, that is utterly fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really, hey. really, uh, I love, always love this cover deeply. A lot of the stuff is, these are records the right house, really. that uh, obviously were released from fairly primary sources you the other day. Doing I mean, flips on the pool, uh, swimming through the Olympics. All reach, uh, all reach of Beaumont, réalisé par le groupe de la recherche musicale. In other words, the, uh, the music concrete people. Are you, uh, Paris. Are you near Wi-Fi? And... And this one we've already yep. seen. FaceTime me, and you can participate in what we're doing right now. These are these are roughly in chronological order. So oh, here's an electronic one. music one. So I got that one. We're That's doing a, a it's a music one. meeting. Yeah, it's got Mamoroglu. And if you uh, if you want, we I can FaceTime you, and you'll be included in the participants. Uh, and a few other people, including Wendy Carlo, this variation for. Sound and that's cool, and yeah, yeah. So All right. that's not, uh, I'll call you a FaceTime. Bye. Accidentally, I've got two copies of that one. Oh, really? <laughs> I never liked that, so I don't have a copy of it. No, the one in your hand, I mean. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yes. This one is absolutely fabulous. This is uh, produced by David Behrman, who many of you might know as being in the Sonic Arts Union and being a pioneer of electronics in the U.S. And it's on the Music of Our Time series, which is utterly fantastic. And it's got John Cage's variations too, with David yes. Caesar playing piano, but if you listen to it without knowing it was piano, you would never know that it's piano, mm -hmm. which is one of the things that's great about it. Now it's got Milton Davitt's Ensemble Synthesizer and all reproducers, Trois Visages de Liège, which was actually... Uh, uh, commissioned by Liege. I bought my copy of that for five dollars in State College, Pennsylvania, on the way back from Virginia at a wrestling trip, and it's MIA at the moment. Rachel Hopkins, Brian's ex, has it somewhere in the house, and I'm gonna make sure. Don't I get let her it. get away with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she right. knows, you know. This is another great one it's on the Turnabout label, which also did some fantastic stuff. It's got Barrio, Cage, and Manolo again, uh, and then this one is really important. Uh, Which, one? unfortunately, I do not have that one. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so this is I on know. Arch Records, which was, uh... Oh, what's the fucking guy's name? Who, uh, Charles Imer Canyon. Yeah, right, Canyon, Charles Imer yeah. Canyon label. And it just says, New Music for Electronic and Recorded Medium. But the thing that distinguishes it is that it's all women. But it nowhere oh, on wow. the packaging does it say that it's all women, which is one of the things that I love about it. I think I didn't notice that until the second or third time I picked it up. So it's Johanna M. Beyer, who was one of Henry Cowell's students, uh, and Neil Lockwood, who's the one who's famous for doing recordings of rivers all over the world, Colin Oliveros, Laurie Spiegel, who uh, does Appalachian electronic music, uh, Megan Roberts, Ruth Anderson, and Laurie Anderson. Another great record. Yeah. And then... Another one on Turnabout, also great. Uh, this has got another Dario, Jacob Truckman, and yep, and two more Mamorolos. Heard it, but don't have it. Wait, yeah, 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 that's a great one, of course. And then this one, also great, the avant-garde label. Uh, 
still kind of orient myself upside down. Isn't mm -hmm. Dutch Brown Home Subsidy? Yes. I think it is, yes. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, it's one of their sub series. Mm -hmm. So this has got uh, two pieces by Gottfried Michael Coney and something by Zoltan Kongratz and Rainer Rhine's Chant de Malbaror, so named after the the uh, famous book. Hey, hey. One of my favorite books. Mm -hmm. Say hello to Hannah, everybody. Hi. Hannah's just joined us from Rio. Hi, Hannah! Hey! From where? I see you! Are you back? Are you in Richmond or in Rio? Are you joking about Rio? I thought you were seriously in Richmond. I mean, Rio. <laughs> For some reason, I'm not getting an audio feed because of the cable. I'll, I'll figure that well, out. Well, uh, you know, every almost every time you've ever tried to use FaceTime simultaneously with other things, you've had problems with the audio. You might remember from every other time we've ever done <laughs> FaceTime. With this it. is different because of the, the cable, though. Yeah. If I were to unplug the cable, the audio would come through, but then she would and then the I lose recording. the screen recording. Okay, well, can you hear? There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I can hear you too. So she's temporarily lost. Nice. So, uh, all right, this is another great one. It's got Ali W. Wilson's Cetus on it. Ali Wilson is distinguished partially as one of the few African American electronic music composers who was doing stuff in 1967. That's got, of course, other people too. Pearl Smiley was one of the Columbia Princeton crowd. Uh, one of the relatively rare, very active women in the Columbia Princeton crowd. And then this record is kind of awful, but uh, it's making a really nice reflection right now on the camera. It looks like a condom, like a large package. <laughs> well, it's a. The Magnum condom. Opus by <laughs> Trojan. <laughs> but this has got stuff by. Uh, yeah, they're in, in the Swedish, Ralph Winston and Leo Nilsson. I think whether they're Swedish or Danish. Danish. Okay. Nilsson. Nilsson. Are we Yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, it's not that good. Not but that good. Not too bad, it looks great. Yeah, the yeah. cover's nice. Okay, then, then another one on the Turnabout series. These are all winners of some annual contest that they have at Dartmouth, mm -hmm. um, which is mostly people that wouldn't have heard that much about before. Uh, and sense. some of it's okay. Um, for example, Peter Rushanak, Jose Vicente Asuar, Peter Klausmeyer, Richard Allen Robinson, Raymond Moore, and Jean Claude Risset. The only only Risset is the only one that I've ever heard of. Risset, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, here's one from the League of Composers. Maurice Ray, Joel Russell, Daria Semengen, and Menachem Zor. This is really that one doesn't have the Paul Lansky on it, or am I thinking of another record? Oh, maybe it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. And I only named the people on the uh, first side. This is Richard Kahn, Arthur Berger, who's a Are you on your name? Paul Lansky. No, so I'm just then, pulling uh, my phone up. The Music of Our Time series again. This is another great one. Richard Maxfield, one of the rare recordings that he made yeah. before he died. Yeah. Pretty young. Steve Reich's Come Out, very famous piece, mm -hmm. which I love. And Pauline Oliveris' is One of Four, which I also love. Got mine autograph. Did you really? But, well, I, by Pauline. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have some little bit of correspondence with her by email. She's quite friendly, which, of course, I appreciate. She was, she was very nice. I said that... Um, I had worked with her assistant, her one-time assistant, Katerina, and she Katerina said... Katerina Duray was a... I yeah, didn't know that. yeah, and oh. she said, oh, do you know her through uh, through Michael Pestel? Oh, interesting. I said, yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah cool. I, know, I had no idea that that connection existed. I, I saw her do a performance of more meditative-type pieces, uh, sort of group... Can you hear me with me? No, it, there's a, a there's a series of scores called Sonic Meditations. It's published by Smith Publications in Baltimore, and this was in Baltimore, and it was those pieces, and it was really utterly great. I totally loved it. But anyway, uh, here's another American Closers Alliance thing: Arthur Prager, William Matthews, and Elias Tenenbaum. If those of you who think this is going on entirely too long, I can assure you it will not last forever. Uh, then here's one with Roger Reynolds, whose work I like a lot. Alice Shields. Who's Another one of those Columbia Princeton people who's working to be pretty dramatic. And I have the Frager again. 
and now we move on to computers. Uh, I've never seen that before. M.V. Matthews, of course, was well known for being associated with Bell Labs, and people like James Tenney worked with him. And then this is about Jean Claude Rousset and Tenney, uh, Wayne Smallson, I've never heard of, R.N. Shepard, who's the guy who created Pop Quiz. You, you probably yeah. didn't want to hear him know, but maybe one person not. Shepherd's Tones. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You know what Shepherd's Tones are? They're yeah. the ones that sound like they're either infinitely ascending or infinitely descending. Yeah. And then uh, J.R. Pearson or Matthews. Well, Max, Max Matthews basically invented computer audio. It's and a little it, more complicated than that. And but. there's a whole record of just stuff from the Bell Labs that's pretty awful, but it's them demonstrating what you can do with electronic music and stuff like that. Jingle bells or, or whatever. I mean, not only that, but there's yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff along those lines, yeah. and then a sort of noise piece by uh, Tenny, if I remember correctly. Well, and his his uh, his uh, realization of uh, bicycle bill for two with voice synthesis. I don't remember that. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that from I have it thousand? <laughs> well, no, no. The the connection is that uh, Max Matthews did bicycle bill for two with with voice synthesis. And then Arthur C. Clarke heard that okay. and based that scene in 2001 right. on yeah. Max Matthews' piece. Would you do me a favor, Kelly, and point the laptop at me so that our huge uh, viewing audience can see these record covers? Oh, Let me get up. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. All right, now this one, again, computer music. This has the absolutely wonderful Computer Cantata by one of my favorite composers, LeJaron Hiller, and his collaborator with the computer part of things, Robert Baker, and a piece by John Melby. Uh, more computer stuff. This has uh, J.K. Randall and uh, two, two pieces by him, Barry Verko and Charles Dodge. I love all this stuff. Yeah. But one thing that I am very proud of is that I wrote an article about J.K. Randall, and he died recently, and even though I appear to be generally banned from Wikipedia, they allow my article about J.K. Randall in the in the memoriam to him on Wikipedia. So right. I have managed to get past the Wikipedia censors. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, and then uh, before what, music. What year is it? Is this the uh, well, we're getting up to the from? 60s now, I think. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, So you can't find any dates. 66 is one of them, but that's not actually the piece. It's a piece different than the one that's on the record. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see any dates here. 74 might be one of them, but no, I don't know. So maybe it's the 70s. The record itself is from 74, but the pieces were probably from earlier. Okay. So this is uh, Charles Dodge. Bulant Arel and Benjamin Wartz, who is still alive and still publishing a fantastic magazine called Open Space. Mm. One of my favorite music, music magazines. And then uh, more computer stuff that's more recent. This is 70s stuff. Um, uh, Godfrey Win Winham? Yours? Uh, Barry Verko, who we've already, who's now we've already run for us, Richard Hoffman, and Joel Russell. All these pieces are from the 70s. The last two are from 76, and then the first two is not a date. It's a punch oh. cards. Punch oh. cards, right. Yeah. And then now we move on to the music concrete category, uh, which is basically just uh, Pierre Henri and Schaefer stuff. Um, this is another one on a. Uh, this is from, must be from England. Records from England, uh, subsidiary of London Records, uh, uh, so the panorama of music concrete, which means really early pieces by by uh, Pierre Henri and uh, Pierre Schaefer. Pierre and Pierre. Pierre and Pierre. <laughs> and then from our old favorite record label, Candide, which uh, I absolutely love, and I love most of their covers. And this one's got more, uh, almost entirely French stuff, although there's one Czech guy on here, Ivo Malek. So Pierre Schaefer, F.B. Mosch, M. Filippo, F. Uh, Francois Bale, Luc Ferrari, it might be Belgian, I forget whether he's French or not, but 
I give him a leg. I'm pretty sure I can't remember if it was a check and then Bernard Parmigiani. Which reminds me, did I have queued up a Bernard Parmigiani soundtrack to a Valerian Borovchek animation? Wow. Valerian Borovchek is a Polish animator who's one of my favorite animators of all time who became a porno maker. So he went from making some of the greatest uh, animations of all time to being a porn. So I have to show that because I, I told yeah, you porn, I porn animation? No, no. Actual, yeah, that, I mean, would be, that would be more interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, the animation stuff is amazing. This is not my favorite piece, but it does have the Bernard Parmesan, so I'm going to show it. So I'm going to have to get this. Uh, should I move forward? No, if you just scooch a little bit to the left so I can just get my foot down there so I don't step on you. And then let's see whether I can do this without knocking it down. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's not. And then I just have to change the channel because I totally forgot that I had this key. Oh, Valerian Barocek is one of my favorite animators of all time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he went on doing porn, and I've always wanted to see more of his porn. I've only seen one of them. It's got a. It's got a. Uh, a guy wearing a costume to look like some sort of beast who's so it's a sort of a bestiality film except that the beast is mythical and uh and I, I, anyway there are some strange things about it make it far more interesting than your usual porn so here we go there's bernard parmigiani from his uh There's a there, but we won't worry about that right now. This is a movie, even though it won't be obvious, about concentration camps. <laughs> At least I don't think it's obvious. There's an explanation.
based on some chap that was in the concentration camp but that was hypothetically developed in its really abstract way. So, Highly abstract way. Huh? I mean, you wouldn't, except for maybe the train sound. Yeah, yeah, the train's at the end, and yeah. then, yeah, the, the decapitation with the, the system, system, uh, systematic sort of decapitation with right. the, the yeah, mulls the same bodies. Yeah. Um, but I love that piece. And I, I think uh, Barofchek is was absolutely fantastic. I've always been interested in seeing more of his uh, animation, which is all which I find to be almost impossible to find, and more of his porn too, for that matter. <laughs> I've had, I've seen the beast actually. Oh yeah, I know that. Part. It's pretty silly, but it's also a bit kind of amazing that it could pass any censors either, because the, the fictitious beast creature that's shown having sex with this woman has a penis that's like a, a long <laughs> pig snout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, it's, it's huge and then it has an end on it that's kind of like this. Uh, it's pretty intense. Um, I could go on forever, but what I really would rather do is grab some beers and sit out front where it's cool. Mm -hmm. Does anybody object to that? Call it a, call it a night on yeah, the Yeah, call mm. it a night on the mm. All right. I mean, okay, thank you. I mean, I didn't even get into anything in a way. Like, so this night. is a totally a live fantastic collection. 
You have this, don't you? Oh, I, I tracked down the first edition of it. Oh, yeah, is that different from this edition? It doesn't have the DVD. Not, folks. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and then and then they put out the version with the DVD, and I said, well, I've got to get that. <laughs> well, at any rate, I mean, I have all kinds of things here that would be utterly fantastic to listen to, but I am uh, too hot, and would rather just relax and have a beer sitting out front, mm-hmm. so let's do that. Uh, or whatever. Let's at least sit up front. I have chairs, etc. that I can put out there. It will make us much more comfortable. So Mars. And that's all that really yeah. uh, A little beat from my yoga class. Yeah. A little beat from other things I made. Too. No, no, no. Nothing's happening on that thing. Nothing at all. I figured I'd tease you anyway. Yeah, nothing's happening. Probably will not. Actually. Well, but she's cool. If not, he's still my pretty fantastic person to be around. She's mm-hmm. a very cool person. Mm-hmm. I like being around. Yeah. I like the dogs. So yeah, we went to the we went to the park for about two hours. Yeah, yeah, we'd be double fisting because I lost a I lost a beer and then I found it. I need to grab something. Yeah, can make you something. Huh? Can make you something. You got something there? Yeah, you want some uh, like pasta or something? Something. Yeah. Just a little, little bit of. Yeah, you could give some nutrition. Yeah, I owe you a meal. Yeah,